Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another episode of repair slash modification tube? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to dispense with the pleasantries on uh, this series of videos. Um, I'm going to try to edit down the video and whatnot uh, so you don't have to watch the many hours I spent uh, working on this. But anyway, so this is the completed Game Boy that I uh, demoed in the, the previous intro video. And so I'll be doing a four-part series um, demonstrating the different steps that I had to take in order to complete this unit. Um, as evidenced by, you know, my background wallpaper. I love the Game Boy, so we'll get right into it. So we're going to have a four-part series in here. We're going to start with uh, looking at removing the reflective film in this, uh, this episode. Next episode, we'll be looking into how to add a backlight. And the uh, third episode will be how to do the biversion modification, um, the circuitry for that. And then finally, the last part will be a description and explanation of the software that I wrote for the microprocessor that controls the, uh, you know, reading the, the sensor uh, for changing modes and then using pulse width modulation to generate the uh, backlight colors. So uh, stay tuned. Um, and I'll get right into it right now on describing how to remove the reflective uh, film on the, the back of these LCDs. So I hope you guys enjoy. So I just got this in. Um, this is a Play It Loud Game Boy um, dot, DMG, basically dot matrix uh, Game Boy. This is um, not the original, original model, but this is kind of the revamped version that they created in a couple different colors as well as a clear unit that I have here. A bit yellow, but um, yeah, that's one thing that I'm going to look into how to clear that up. But anyway, um, just got this in the mail. I got this for really cheap. I mean, these usually go for like maybe $40, $50 for like the clear ones with the original back and whatnot. Um, I got this, I think, for $15, something like that. Uh, seller listed it as having some issues. Um, so first thing I did when I got this in was I um, pop popped some 4 AA batteries in, popped my copy of... Uh, Pokemon Blue in and fired her up. And here, let me turn down the contrast. Yeah, it's another one of the issues. The contrast wheel is a little uh, funky. You can see that there are distinctly, let me turn this volume down, there are distinctly uh, two lines as well as a few more down here. And they kind of come and go when you uh, press the screen there. You can see I can get that one to show up. Wow, it just got the whole thing to flash. But anyway, um, this basically is um, an issue with the, the contact along the bottom of the LCD. So we're going to open this guy up and see if we can fix that. Actually, I fixed most of, most of them just right now just by poking it. <laughs> so yeah, um, there are two ways to go about fixing this. Uh, putting a little strip of cardboard or something to apply pressure to that um, contract, contact strip at the bottom of the screen. And that'll, that's sort of a temporary fix. Or um, if you're careful, you can take a soldering iron, put it on a low temperature, and carefully run it along um, the bottom of the display just to make sure that you reseat that connector. So yeah, uh, first things first, let's uh, pop the cartridge out, pop the batteries out. Ah, as the batteries go everywhere. So yeah, uh, this is actually my first, uh, I have Game Boy Pockets and whatnot back home. But this is my first uh, fatty Game Boy, essentially. Um, so you're going to need a tri-wing screwdriver. There's six screws, uh, two inside the battery bay, and then four on either corner of the back of the unit. We have the unit right here. Um, watch out, don't yoink it. There's a uh, ribbon cable that connects the front screen and the buttons with the actual main board in the back. So what we are going to do is tilt this out just enough to get our finger in there and carefully disconnect that cable. Now we have the two units, uh, the front half and the back half. And yeah, uh, interesting that they have like separate boards for everything. This is the main processor board. Oh Jesus, reeks of like old electronics. Oh man, that is pungent. Anyway, we have our headphone jack board on the bottom here. Uh, interesting that they have through-hole capacitors for the AC decoupling. And um, you may have noticed on my uh, Game Boy Pocket teardown that I've done, uh, there's a little board that sits in the corner that does the DC-DC uh, conversion from, in that case, 3 volts 
to 5 volts for the main processor and then negative, I think, 19 for the LCD contrast. This actually has an entirely separate board that does that same function um, that is just off to the side here and it has a little uh, transformer in there, some capacitors, diodes, so it's just a switching regulator essentially. Um, so if you wanted to remove this, uh, there's two screws. Uh, these are Phillips, keep in mind. Two Phillips screws and then another two near the headphone jack and this entire board comes off then. And that'll be necessary if you'd like to clean the uh, cartridge connector and whatnot. Um, I've already cleaned this unit thoroughly because when I received it, it appeared to be slathered in Vaseline. Uh, at least I hope it was Vaseline. Anyway, um, so it was sticky and icky and I needed to just give it a bath. <laughs> so yeah, I opened everything. There's uh, some corrosion on these contacts. So to get these guys out... Um, there are indentations uh, in the plastic on the inside. You can just take a thin screwdriver and kind of push that in slightly and these will slide right out. And there are two of these on the bottom and then one in the middle and you can remove all, of the, all three of them to clean them. Um, in addition, these two are actually um, on the main board. Uh, so if you want to scrub those connectors, um, if there's battery acid on them, uh, you can clean it with baking soda and water and whatnot to alleviate the acidity of the battery acid, and that'll do you just fine. So yeah, uh, looking at this main board, it's pretty clean. Um, nothing too bad there. So next, we have the front half, and there's about a million screws here. So uh, through the magic of video editing, I will go through, I'll show you where the screws are now, I'll take them out on my own time, and then I'll pop the video back up. Anyway, so there's one, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws all around the main board. And Nintendo is uh, nice enough to put white circles around where all the screws go. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get this popped out. I will pause the video and I'll be back after I'm done that. Okay, all the screws are out and we're going to be able to very carefully lift the entire front board out. And there she goes. All the buttons were absolutely horrendous when I first got this, so I scrubbed them down. Uh, hot soapy water does a great job of opening that up. Uh, let's not lose the screws. And the speaker was particularly dirty as well, so I took some uh, isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, cleaned that up. We're good to go. So here's the actual LCD screen. Uh, two screws just uh, securing the ribbon cable. As well as very interesting, they solder a metal bar or something like that just to hold the cable down. That seems a little superfluous. Anyway, um, here's the actual connector itself to the LCD, and it's just a handful of connector uh, connections. Very interesting. Um, so basically, the entire row driver, column driver circuitry is on this board here, and uh, well, on the flex, uh, flat flex, and then there's another one on the back here. Um, and everything is communicated kind of serially through this one ribbon connector. Um, there's a plastic bezel that goes on the LCD here um, that basically holds everything together. I bought a RGB backlight kit, um, so I probably will end up doing, after I fix the issue with the, uh, the lines on the screen missing, um, I probably will go ahead and remove the polarizing filter, uh, the uh, reflective layer, put in the, um, I'll invert the screen, I'll put in the backlight, and then I'll do a double vi version um, so that I can get better contrast on this unit. The way that we're going to do this is uh, plugging it in uh, while the unit's open uh, so that we can actually poke the screen and see if the issue is indeed with the contacts, which I believe it is. And we are going to want something non-conductive as well as our game otherwise we can't see anything upside down Let's switch it on okay now we have everything now I'm going to take something once again not conductive just a little pry tool and put some pressure and yeah you can definitely see I can make that one line come back and a couple of them at the end go in and out. So definitely just go along here. Yeah, everything on the right hand side of the screen is okay. So definitely I can get these to kind of 
appear and disappear. I'm going to have to peel this off. Just get in here. Okay, so now that we have the adhesive rubber off, we okay anyway yeah so this is a very common problem uh, with these screens unfortunately it stinks but yeah um, basically they use a type of thermal glue on these uh, display strips and after a while as the glue ages it starts to separate a little bit and so the the wires that are connecting from this display chip to the screen actually um, they break off unfortunately and, or they kind of, you know, intermittently connect or not. And thus you will see um, kind of some columns missing. There's also one of these connectors along the side here for all the rows. Um, so if you have horizontal lines, it's due to this connector being bad. If you have vertical ones, it's due to this one. Um, as far as from what I've heard, it's actually easier to fix vertical lines and horizontal lines. Um, but it's kind of a pain either way, I think. Uh, so yeah, this is sort of, I can sort of get it to work there, you can kind of see. Yeah, the screens on these old Game Boys, uh, the pocket screen, the Game Boy pocket screen is much superior. Uh, this is kind of meh. But yeah, you can see, um, just for me poking it, I can, I got most of the middle lines to, to appear again. Note that um, the reflected material on the original Game Boy here, um, is kind of yellowish green because apparently they thought that that gave better contrast. Uh, but in the Game Boy Pocket, it's more silverish. Um, but the screen that they use in the Pocket is superior in terms of contrast anyway. Actually very cool that they put all the component values of um, all the capacitors and resistors and diodes and whatnot on the silk screen onto the main board. So definitely kudos to Nintendo for that. And um, the main thing that I noticed that I thought was really interesting, um, hidden underneath this connector, um, it has a like a silkscreen square with an arrow that says do not put a screw into this slot uh, because actually that would go through the LCD and damage it if you tried to do that. I thought that was very interesting. Why do they have that hole there even um, if you're not supposed to put a screw in there anyway? Uh, I thought that was really weird. Um, and they also have some kind of interesting date code thing going on here, um, as well as the copyright 1989 uh, on this board here. Though, this being a play it loud, I think this came out like maybe 94 or something like that, maybe 95. So maybe this is just an old board that they reused. They had some leftover uh, they put into the newer shells. So here's the uh, Game Boy DMG in pieces, in its constituent pieces, and I'm going to attempt now to remove the rear polarizing filter as well as the rear reflective layer so that I can backlight this sucker. Um, one thing to note is there are two screws at the bottom here. I've already removed them. Very small, fine Phillips. Uh, they will need to be removed, and if you have a pry tool like this guy, it helps to pull from here very carefully. There's a light layer of adhesive along the edge. And if you're very careful, you can get it to tilt up. And this part I might have to do off screen because you literally get, like this is about as far as I'm comfortable pulling it away from the case. Uh, you barely get any room at all to work here. And I need to do this without a camera in my way. But I will show you the method that I'm using. So we're gonna grab a razor blade. In this case, I have a, uh, a box cutter here. So I'm going to remove the blade and use the blade to actually start prying. And this guy just keeps popping back in. Great. This is already a good start. So yeah, um, what we're going to want to do is go underneath both layers. There's two layers. There's a shiny uh, silverish layer and then there's a kind of darker opaque layer that's uh, the actual polarizing filter. So you want to get underneath both of them and careful not to scratch the screen. You want to just separate it enough, I had it right there, to actually get your fingers in. So I'm going to do this off camera and show you the results afterwards because I do not want to break this. 
Uh, Game Boys uh, aren't that cheap anymore um, in terms of getting a working uh, Game Boy with a working LCD, even if the body's in bad condition, is still like 20 or 30 bucks a pop. So I'd rather not break this. So I'll be back after I get this off. Whew, that was nerve-wracking, I will tell you. Uh, it took me maybe five minutes or so very carefully prying um, just to get this, um, essentially the two layers, as I said, the reflective backing as well as the uh, polarizing filter off. And so now you can see, I don't know if this still works, hopefully it does, um, I have this um, clearish panel now, this is the actual LCD itself. Um, there's still some gunk here, so next step would be to take some isopropyl alcohol. Here I have 91%, a Q-tip, and just to go over and take off the fingerprints and whatnot. What I ended up doing was um, I got my thumb in between both layers and I carefully kept pushing my thumb in, inwards to kind of separate the adhesive from the, the glass and that worked out just fine. Actually overall this was easier um, than the Game Boy Pocket um, in a way. Um, even though this is still attached to the board and it's kind of annoying, um, it was um, a little bit less worrisome because I, I think actually the cable on the uh, pocket doesn't kind of give you as much leeway in terms of this. I usually end up desoldering um, the, the bottom uh, row of contacts so that I can flip it out on its side. I think uh, isopropyl actually kind of dissolves adhesive that they use. The adhesive that they use isn't so sticky um, and once you kind of soak it in isopropyl uh, what tends to happen is it kind of turns like jelly like almost. There's a screen perfectly clear so I'm going to show you guys the backlight now um, well, once I find it and so here we go. Yeah I got this from uh, Handheld Legend. Um, and I actually have two because uh, the first one, one of the LEDs had a problem and actually would not light up at all. So here's the guy that I got. It's RGB, um, comes with resistors, also a polarizing filter, new one because we just pulled the old one off. So here's the panel itself. I pre-soldered the wires. I just stuck a little tape there to, to keep her in. But yeah, uh, it's labeled in terms of uh, it's common anode and then a red, green, and blue cathode, and I color-coded it according to the wire. The wire comes with it, but it's not pre-soldered. There's protective films on everything, and um, so what I'm planning on doing is uh, actually doing an invert mod. Um, so if I turn the screen, uh, the polarizing filter this way, you can see it's kind of clearish. If I turn it the other way, it turns much darker, and this is uh, it inverted, basically. Uh, fingerprints everywhere. Oh my goodness, it's going to drive me nuts. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to invert it so that I can um, invert it again in, in uh, the actual signal itself, cut some traces, and that will be pretty much the highest contrast that you can get from this screen. 